Will the stock market crash in 2022? There's definitely a good chance. The reason I say that is because there's striking differences between the conditions of 2020 to 2021 versus going to the year 2022. Now, for those of you who don't closely follow the financial markets, at the beginning of 2020, when the pandemic hit, the Federal Reserve enacted aggressive, accommodative um, financial policies. Now, this included full quantitative easing, which was $120 billion a month going towards mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasuries. Now that'd be 80 billion in US treasuries and 40 billion in the mortgage backed securities. 0% interest rates, which made it free to borrow. The housing moratorium, so people could use the money they would have otherwise paid rent with to buy goods and services. Student debt pause, same thing. Paying debt is destroying money from an economic, macroeconomic standpoint. Paying debt is the destruction of money in a deflationary action, whereas purchasing goods and services is a positive to the economy and the growth of the economy. So, two huge expenses that were put on hold opened up a lot of buying power for the average individual. The unemployment increase in pay. Um, Unemployment, I believe, was all the way up to $1,000 a week from March of 2020 until August of 2021. The PPP loans, a lot of money got thrown around there to any business that wanted it, basically. The stimulus checks, a very accommodative Federal Reserve. Now, if you don't watch the financial markets closely, the Probably the biggest factor in any stock trader's mind is the Federal Reserves and the actions that they take and the things that they say. I'll definitely get into that in more in future videos, but for now, the Federal Reserve, what they say, what they do, it's the primary thing that the financial markets look at. Share buybacks. <laughs> this is a pretty crazy one. So. Most companies, when they have profits, they now take those profits and use it to buy their own stock shares to boost the overall price or value of the company. And they do, and they even take out debt against themselves with this 0% interest rate to buy their shares. So, not doing a whole lot for the economy, but it's um, it was a profitable profitable tactic uh, for a while. It's slowing down now, um, but it was definitely going on heavily for the past ten years, and even more heavily when rates went to zero in twenty twenty. So, what is changing? As of um, November, the Federal Reserve started unwinding fifteen billion dollars a month of quantitative easing. They plan to be completely finished with quantitative easing by March, as in no longer purchasing assets. Also in March, they are saying they're going to do their first interest rate increase since the beginning of the pandemic, which puts a tremendous amount of pressure on asset prices because it all comes down to the price of borrowing. When the price of borrowing is zero, that creates huge, huge asset bubbles. But when you put the pressure back down on it and it becomes more expensive to borrow and more expensive to pay off debt. It makes conditions very difficult for asset prices. The housing moratorium ended in August. The student debt payments are resuming this May. The unemployment pay went back to normal. There's no more PPP loans, no more stimulus. The Federal Reserve has actually went from accommodative to more um, financial market people call hawkish, meaning aggressive and trying to tighten conditions more so than expand in um, monetary conditions. This is because the rate of inflation has been spiraling out of control this year, and the Fed is in a difficult spot. They basically have to choose between letting inflation get out of control and 
keeping rates at zero or increasing rates and probably crushing the stock market. The share buybacks, as I mentioned, are slowing down. And the most important indicator of them all that has been correct over 90% of the time throughout history for situations like this is the inversion of the yield curve for the U.S. Treasury market. Now, U.S. Treasuries, there are bonds. Bonds are split up into time, um, time values with interest rates. So a three-month bond, for example, would give a 0.3% interest rate. A 10-year bond would give somewhere in the neighborhood of a 1.5% interest rate, you know, longer period of time, higher interest rate. But what happens is with the um, the curves, the trajectory of the interest rates are supposed to be upward sloping. But recently, in um, early December, the 10-year treasury inverted its trajectory with the three-month treasury, which means that an enormous amount of money went into these long-dated bonds. And the bond market is often referred to as the smartest money in the world because it's the largest um, amount of money or the largest market in the world. It's a $45 trillion market. So when, whenever this has happened um, in the past, say, 100 years, uh, it's been correct over 90% of the time about predicting a stock market crash. In addition to that, the, there was an inversion of what's called the Euro dollars futures market, which is basically the cost of borrowing money outside of America. Now, I'll go into that in more detail in a future video, but the Euro dollar futures market and the US treasury market are the two most important asset classes when looking at macroeconomics. And this yield curve phenomenon happened in both of them this December, which means that the smartest money in the world is preparing for something nasty and very, very soon. Now, I hope this, I hope you got something out of this. If you think I could do a better job explaining something or was too vague on something, please leave a comment below. And uh, if you like the content, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, whatever. And I appreciate it, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.